Alright everybody, this is a -bomb, and welcome back to my Ashen Boss Fight series. This time we are taking on the fourth boss, King Omar, Shadow of the Arisen. It'll only show on his health bar, Shadow of Arisen. So, let's go over the gear. I have Tyrant's Plating as my armor. It's not too bad. Pretty good. Then I have... Uh, let's put on the Time Worn Spears, actually. I only have the wooden... I only have the bone spears for uh, the teleporting of... Uh, I'll show you. Teleporting for... Th if you throw a spear at those red... Uh, those statues are glowing red, or you'll teleport to the one you hit. So yeah, that's the only reason I have a bunch of those. And we have Malik's Shield. Get that from completing uh, Jokel, or Yokel, whatever way you want to pronounce it. Y you only get that from completing his uh, side quest completely. Then I got the Liberian... Latharian Lantern. That's the the brightest lantern you can get. Then I have my gourd with max uses and max potency. So that takes a lot of uh, takes a lot of uh, echoes to get that. Then I got that kind of has a regen effect that teleports back to our camp, and I also have a potion and I just went and crafted the max that you can hold of it that if you use it your your dodges will consume less stamina I guess as long as you haven't lost 30% of your health I guess that's what, what that means and I have uh, forgot to uh, go over while in the other videos so we'll do it now the artifacts and towels uh, the towels the talismans and relics. The talismans are the ones that are the four on the outside. The relic is the one right in the middle. So we get last stand. So the lower your health, the more damage you do. Does come in handy. Then we get robust. Decreases our stamina. Decreased our stamina penalty that's on our armor, so we don't use as much stamina. Then double swigs. That's why I have. That's why I have ten uses on my my gourd. Normally at max you only get eight, but because I have that on there, I have ten. And then I have the seer one. It gives you, re, it gives you a health over time, which combined with last, uh, or no. And then, I'll go over that in a minute. Then our relic is the Gaffin's Blessing. Depending on how long you went without being hit uh, for damage, you will have a damage resistance to one hit. So that combined with Seer, very good. Then if you can't help but get damage on you, then the last stand helps out too, giving you a lot more damage. It's like if you if you lost a fourth of your health, your damage goes up by 20%. If you lost half, it goes up 50%. And if you lost three-fourths, it goes up 80%. Pretty good. So, I'll show you. Now, if you look at his... If you look at his head piece... I'm go out in the light so you can see it better. If you go, you look at his headpiece. That's what it looks like when you can completely tank one hit. You'll take no damage at all if you get hit. Once you get hit, it goes away. Then it'll hit stage one. When it hits stage one, it'll look like that, but without the branches hanging out. Stage two, the branches grow her out a little bit, but not as much. And stage three looks like that. So yeah, stage one, you can tank 15% of a, 
damage of a hit after 15 seconds of not being hit. Then when 18 seconds goes by, then you can tank 40%. Then once you get 23 seconds, you can tank a complete hit. So that's going to help out with our our uh, our boss. And I forgot to go over the weapons. The Ash Infused Hook Club. The Hook Club is the strongest one-handed weapon in the game. Well, main game. I don't know if DLC weapons are stronger. But getting it Ash Infused at plus 7, that's the highest it can go. It will not go up to plus 8. And then we got the Rune Axe, the one we got from completing... Killing the, I believe it was the s second boss. Yeah, second boss. We got it for for defeating uh, Gororan. And we got it to Ash of Us plus seven. So we're going to do the most damage that we can. So here we go. Now this boss does have two phases. Once you hit, once you uh, hit, get him to halfway, he gets stronger. So here we go. And also we get two NC NPCs to help us fight until the second phase. Then we lose the one that's not normally with us. So here we go. King Omar, Shadow of the Ashen. Heck, that entrance was was pretty good. We tanked one hit, see if you see our headdress is gone. Now we're gonna try to take out his minions as they as they he does use minions. Woo! starting to get our, our relic back, so... Right, we're getting close to the second phase. So yeah, he's about to do his explosion that he caught us with the first time. And our NPCs are just dumb enough to, uh... Alright, we're about to lose our... About to lose our, uh, our one, and he's gonna get stronger. Staring her toes now. All right, come on, Joko, heal me up, buddy. We 
ready to start playing a little more on defense. We can't be using all of our uh, So I was wondering what was hitting us. There we go. I almost got him. And we got him. He wasn't too bad. He a little tanky, but overall not too bad. Let's see what do we get for beating him. The one girl came back that he absorbed or killed or whatever you want to call it. Let's Show the Arisen defeated. The Umbral Veil. Okay. Alrighty. I will say that's probably... It's probably... Even with how all of our equipment... Our maxed out equipment and stuff, he did a... He got us a couple of times, good, almost got us a couple of times, so he probably is the best, strongest boss we have faced so far. So, anyway, that's it for this episode. Next time, we are going after the final boss, the final boss of the main game. Not the final boss, period. You guys remember, we have one DLC boss to do. So, yo, uh, we're going after Cisna. The Spinner of Shadows. So, stay tuned guys, and I'll see you next time.